Hi everyone. Um, we welcome you tonight to our Bible study, our Tuesday night Bible study live um, here at our home. We believe in building strong families for the 21st century. Yes, here at New Hope. Yeah, we believe in building strong families for the 21st century. And we want to welcome you to this uh, Walking in the Word Bible study. This is our time to uh, spend quality time again with the Lord and as we delve into his word to see what the master has to say and uh, what a what a joy it is. Uh, as you all know, uh, we are living in some uh, troubled times right now and we are treading through some difficult waters. But we believe as always that the Lord himself is going to navigate us through these troubled waters. So as we venture through and going through this season, uh, we want to take opportunity to spend quality time in the Word. This is our regular Tuesday night Bible study. Yes, and I'm so excited um, um, at this time just to sit down and uh, hear what God got to say. Yeah, and what a word we have for you tonight. So let's get started. We always start our Bible studies with this short prayer, and I hope hopefully you will pray with me as well. Lord, tonight, as always, as we come before you in your presence, we only ask that you would give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what your word would instruct. Give us fresh raiment tonight and give us a fresh revelation of your word so that we will not err in all that you have assigned our hands and hearts to do. We thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Well, like you, we're here at the comforts of our home because we are uh, obeying the rule of the of the uh, of the authorities. They ask us to stay at home and stay safe, and we're asking you to do the same: uh, stay at home, stay safe. But while we're at home, we're going to not just sit around and do nothing. We're going to spend quality time with God. And no better time than now than to spend that time in the Word. The Bible says, Charlene, that the Word of God is sure. It says, the Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So I love the Word. I know you do too. I, 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 I feast on it. I eat it. <laughs> that, that's my life. That's, that's how we grow. That's right. That's right. So let's go to the Word. Tonight's Word is coming from the book of Songs 103 and what a powerful powerful testimony uh, David gives us in this song songs 103 my 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 uh, we're gonna read from two different translations tonight mm -hmm. um, we're gonna read from the um, I believe this is the NIV yeah the NIV version and the message Bible and we want to hear clearly uh, what God is saying to us. Now, in the NIV, it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Amen. Amen. Number one, he forgives my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death. And he crowns me with love and tender mercies. And he fills my life with good things. And the last verse says in verse number five, my youth is renewed. Charlene, like the eagle. God will renew our days when we mature like the eagle. Wow. In the Message Bible, uh, it reads, Oh, my soul, bless God. Oh, my soul, bless God. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. From head to toe, I personally have made a decision to bless God's name. Amen. Personally. And I think every now and then we need to make a personal decision. To bless God. Amen. I mean, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
that that means every every minute, every second, I will bless the Lord. I mean, in everything that we do, we ought to what? Praise the Lord. Praise Him and bless His name. And and this is what David said. David said, "I'm going to, I'm going to bless Him, and I'm going to command my spirit. I'm going to command my soul uh, to to bless God with everything that is within me, from my head to my toe." Now that's that's awesome. At all times. At all times. That's awesome. Because if you're going to praise him, you want to praise him like that. If you're going to give him glory, you want to give him glory like that. If you're, going to, if you're going to give a testimony about how good he is to you, you want to do it with everything that Ooh, is yes, yes, within yes. me. You. Yeah. yeah, at all times. I, I, when I wake up, I will bless the Lord. When, when, when I lay down, I, I'm going down, I will bless the Lord. When I'm driving in my car, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, but all times. And he commands, he says, oh, my soul, bless God. And then he says to us, do not forget a single blessing. His benefit. Do not, yeah, say, do not forget, in the Message Bible, it says, do not forget a single blessing. In the King James, it says, you know, and, and do not forget all his benefits okay. that he have given toward you. So, 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 so number one is as we, as we are blessing God and, and giving him what is rightfully his um, from the vantage point where we're not asking for anything. No, no, we're not, we're not going to God to ask for one single mm -hmm. thing. We just, we just being grateful for the opportunity and being thankful for what he has already done for us. And, and in this case, he says, and don't you forget. <laughs> don't, don't forget. I, I can never forget. How, yeah. how could I, I forget when, when he wakes me up every morning oh, yeah. with fresh new mercies? Yeah. How, how can I ever forget yeah. when he helped me and put food on my table? Yeah. How can I ever forget, hallelujah, when he put clothes on my back? How can I ever forget? I will, Bishop. You know, some people forget. Some people have what I call selective amnesia. <laughs> they remember what they want to remember and they forget what they want to forget. But David says, as we command our soul, as we make a decision to bless God with everything that is within us from head to toe, he says in the process of blessing him, he says, don't forget don't forget what he has done. Ooh, he says, don't forget, watch this, not some blessings, but don't forget a single, single blessing. blessing. That means you ought to count your blessings every day. I mean, how, how can you forget <laughs> when God has been so good to us? Yeah. How can you forget when he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Charlotte, what happened is sometimes we remember the big blessings. You know, people remember the big blessings. You know, the big job, the big car, the big house, you know, uh, the big things. But you just mentioned something already that we can't forget. And that's the small things. The things that we don't announce so much, but every time we wake up in the morning, mm. and every time we have the use and the activity of our limbs, yeah. every time we go out and we can come home, that's a blessing. My God, <laughs> you know what? When I wake up in the morning and my feet just just touch the floor, I will what? Bless the Lord. That's right. By God. Yeah. You, you got to when get when I open up my eyes, cause I, He could have allowed me not to get up. Yeah. So I feel like what? I'm gonna bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness, my goodness. I mean, David, such an awesome, awesome man of God, begins to uh, begins to. Uh, guide us through this process as to why we ought to be thankful and grateful unto God. And I think that that is so awesome. Now in this in this particular text now we're going to exegete this this text. Mm -hmm. In this particular text David give five reasons why we ought to bless God. Ooh. Five reasons. And we're going to cover that tonight. Okay. Those five reasons as to why we ought to never ever forget what God has done for us. Number one, he says, uh, 
we ought not forget what he has done for us because, number one, watch this, it's right here in the word, because he has forgiven us. He forgives all of our sins, mm. every one. Thank you, Lord. So, so to the first reason why, why we ought to, you know, command our soul to bless God and give God glory is because he has saved us. Yes. Yeah. Forgiven us. Mm -hmm. You see, now we got some friends. We, you, you too. You, you got some friends who may forgive you, but they won't forget you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the Lord, he says, uh, he wants to forgive us and he wants to forget about it. That means he's not going to bring it up, you know, uh, at some later date when uh, the temperature change or the seasons change or when things are not going quite the way we want them to go, where he constantly reminds us of the things we used to do. Mm. You see, that, that's not forgiving, folks. That's not, you know, if, if you forgave me, if you forgive me, then you got to forget some stuff. You, know, you I can't don't, harbor I don't, it. No, I can't. I, I, I can't bring it back and, 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 and throw it up in your face yeah. and remind you of it. I hold it in my heart. So, so the first thing is we see this, uh, he, he reminds us of this penitent man, a uh, person who understands the forgiveness factor, the yes. forgiveness factor. And, and before, listen, before you can go forward, before you can be healed, before you can do what God's called you to do, there's some folk in your life you got to forgive, flat out forgive. And you can't, you can't harbor it no longer. Okay. You, you can't harbor it no longer. You can't hold on to it no longer. I don't care what boo boo. Oh I don't care what shit they they done. Listen, you just gotta get get over that, and uh, don't let that hold you back from what God has for you. Amen. It's like you know, forgetting those things that are behind. That are behind. And pressing. Pressing, going forward. Yeah. Let it go. He forgives all our iniquities. That's what David says, first of all. Number one, the benefit package. He says, number one, because of who I am in him, my God. he forgives me. He forgives all my iniquities. Now, the word iniquity, watch this, is a strong word. It does not mean mistakes. Mm -hmm. What if the Bible said Christ died for our mistakes? It don't. God forgives our iniquities. God forgive our iniquities. Our sin. Even the secret sin that we don't even want to ever confess. All our ingrained Jesus. perversity. My God, that's everything. Ingrained. I mean, that stuff is so deep mm -hmm. until it's, 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 it's seared mm. in our soul and our spirit. That's how, that's how deep it is. You can't see it with your eye. Ooh, Jesus. But, but you run, but you can never run from mm. it. Wherever you go, it goes with you. And it is ingrained, your ingrained perversity. And uh, he also says it's, it's, it's all the, uh, the bentness of our beings. You know, you know when, you, when sin get a hold of you. Yes, yes. And, and you, you don't, you don't it, deal with that stuff. Yeah. It will mess you up. Mm -mm. It will destroy you. Yeah. It will take over your life. It will consume your life. And, and you can't, this, it'll destroy you because you're trying to cover up something. You can't cover up what's messing you up. Mm -mm. The only way you're going to get fixed up, you got to get rid of it. Yeah, because you can't move, you can never move yeah. forward and be all that God no. desires you to be. Because if you hovering and you holding on guilt of, guilt of past or guilt of, of something that someone has done to you and you want to um, free them or release them from that, we can never be all that God desire and purpose us to yeah. be. Even, even sin said it this way. The Bible said about sin. It says, our sins, what the Bible says, our sins has created a gulf between us and God. My God. You see? And that, that's what sin, sin put distance between us and God. It separates. It separates us. And, and the only thing that can bring us back from that separation is the sacrifice that was that was made on Calvary mm. when Jesus died for it. Mm. He that was blameless became sin for us. He who knew no sin you know became sin for us. I think well, so that we can have a right 
a reconnection to the tree of life. You know what, Bishop? You're saying, is, oh my God, it's so plain when you're saying about that God. And I think about sometimes a lot of times with relationships. Yes. When we don't forgive our spouse or our spouse don't forgive us, it, it, it builds a separation, a gut. And I just thank God, Bishop, because there's no gut. We've been married for how long? Give me a kiss, girl. Mm -hmm. How That's long? Right. How many years? Uh, 45 years. 45 years. Yes, thank you, baby. Yes, ma'am. And uh, still growing and still glowing. <laughs> Help me hear somebody. <laughs> so, number one, <laughs> having fun. I like the word. So, our sins has created a gut between us and God. And, and, and it has caused us to have this uh, bentness in our soul. You see, in our souls, this bentness, it's like a car in an accident mm. and the chassis get bent. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you do. If the frame is bent, it doesn't get fixed mm. unless someone greater than it can handle it. Can fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the, only one, the only one that can fix us out of our bentness and our perversity is Jesus Christ and and I like this because um, our adversary who is the devil mm -hmm. you know he always want to you know accuse us he, yeah. he's the accuser he always wants to accuse us and and when he goes before God and, and, and stands before God uh, he don't have to lie he just say he just say hey look uh, I remember that one mm -hmm. when he did this yeah. I remember that one when she did that I remember uh, him when uh, he hit this, you know, he's telling the truth. But when he go before God, guess what happens? The adversary shows up, mm -hmm. but the advocator is right there. Almighty Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, <laughs> he's Lord. right there, and he don't say one thing. Look, look what he does. When 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 Satan shows up and start accusing, uh -huh. the only thing he does is raise his hand. Mm. He paid the price, huh? There's the nail prints, mm. and he, he he dropped back his his, his robe and you see. Where the spear was, we all say, all yeah. say, thank you, Jesus. They see the crown of yeah, thorns, yeah. and they see the sacrifice. Yeah. So he don't have to say a word. He, he says to them, "You look, whoever you're talking about, they're not here no more." Mm -mm. How about that? That's old, Charlie. Uh, oh, Randy. Oh, oh, oh. It's not here no more. That's not the same person that you used to know. Uh, uh. I'm a new creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when we, when you met Christ, when, when Christ came into your life. He took all of your sins and he bundled those sins up and he threw them into a mm. sea of forgetfulness. Lord, I thank you. Yeah, he threw into a sea of forgetfulness. And, and that is something that you have to deal with uh, with sin and, and forgiveness. Forgiveness simply means that, that you have to put it somewhere where it can't hurt you. Thank you, Lord. And the only one can put it that place that can't hurt you no more is Christ Jesus. When we come to him and confess with our mouth mm -hmm. and believe in our heart, right? He takes all of our sin, he bundles it up, throws it into a sea of forgetfulness, so you it cannot what, condemn Bishop, us without nor at the judgment. Thank I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Because I'm just saying, I, I saw a friend of mine that not long ago, and I ran into him during this particular time and so in the store, and we used to be like tight and all of a sudden, I didn't know what happened, but I saw her, and I saw her in the store. And I was like, hi, how you doing? I was so jubilee. And she was kind of like, mm. And I'm like, what, what, what's the problem? And, and then I, I say, that I do something? And if I did, I just want to say I'm sorry. And uh, forgive me. And um, she said to me, and I was like, wow, this is what she said. She said, you know what? I love you, and uh, I forgive you but I don't never want to be your friend anymore. What a friend we have in Jesus. I thank God for that. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Everything. To God in prayer. See, that's not on you no more. That's on her, whoever that was. But anyway, this forgiveness, forgiveness is a condition that the soul have to deal with before we get to the next step. Yeah. Your soul needs to get to the next step. But the first step is you got to go through a season of forgiveness, penitence, yeah. repentance, a crying out, a turning away, and a coming back to God. And, and, and when you come back to God, uh, to Christ, all is forgiven and all is forgotten. Write that one down. All is forgiven 
all. And all is forgotten. You mean he, every, he, everything? See, the idea behind the word forgiveness is to take away and put somewhere else. Take away and put somewhere else. This is just what God has done for our sin. He has taken them away and put them on Jesus somewhere else and has taken them away and put them into a sea of forgetfulness. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank Forgiven you. and forgotten. So, so the first thing, the first real benefit David sees, Charlie, in Psalms 103, okay. after deciding to give God all this glory, is he says, and not, not forgetting what, not one blessing, he says, mm. I am so thankful for the opportunity to be saved. Thank you. My soul has been rescued. Now, once you move from penitence, from penitence, you move now uh, to another level, another level, which we call the patient. <laughs> patient. Yeah, you move from the from the penitent one to the uh, to becoming a patient in the hospital. You ready for the patient? What's See, the patient? in the, in the text it says this. Uh, watch what it says. He says, who forgive all my sins. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the penitent. Mm -hmm. and, and the and next one is. And heals. And heals. All of my diseases. All my diseases. Every one. Thank you, Lord. Every one of our diseases. So that's the good news that we have right now in this season. That even though we're going through a season of disease and a season of plagues and panic and pandemic. We understand and we know as being a child yeah. of God yeah. that the God we serve is our healer. Yes, he is. So David says, my soul needs to be saved first before my body can be healed. My soul. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your soul needs to be saved and now I can put you in a place to heal your body. Mm -hmm. But you See? can't. Yeah. Go ahead. Because if the soul is all messed up, the soul, and he can't, what, heal my body because I got to get the soul, what, right, yeah. healed. And a lot of our souls, we, we harboring so much uh, junk, yeah. unforgiveness, yeah. And, strife. And you can't get healed. Bitterness. You can't get healed. You're harboring it. You can't get hatred. healed. You can't get healed like that. You, uh, in order for you to be healed from your hurt, in order for your womb, your your wounds uh, uh, to be healed, and uh, all the things you've been going through to be healed, is that you've got to be saved. See, salvation is so important. Having a right relationship with God is so important because your praise will not never be authentic until you learn how. how to repent. See, healing is in your praise. Yes. Healing. Is healing in is in your praise. That's why. Healing is in your praise. I will bless the Lord. At all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I got to continue praising. Continue to praise mouth. him. Every yeah. day. See, my soul need healing. He yes. knew my soul need healing. Yeah. And, and, and the Bible says in Psalms, write this one down, Psalms 107 and 20, he says, and he sent his word and healed them. That's why it's important to get into the word of God. He sent his word and healed them. Healed their soul first. Then. Right? Their soul and then the body followed. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this, is, this is so important here too. And I, I, I love this word. Uh, yeah, the way healing. that he put it, he says he he will heal all our disease. Our soul was diseased. Our soul was diseased mm -hmm. to the point where we didn't want to praise God. We didn't want to give God glory. But once we got healed in our soul, then we're able to praise God. Now, watch this. Uh, the soul does uh, does indeed sometimes have a disease. That is unlike the body. My God. Too different. Uh, some of the diseases, the diseases that the soul have to deal with is like guilt, 
fear, doubt, depression, mm. anger, lust, hatred, jealousy, malice. envy, mm. spite, malice, mm -hmm. greed, and anything like that. These, these, are, these are the type of diseases that the soul have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to let you go. They don't let you go. And now, yeah. now we're not talking about body diseases, yeah. like heart disease and right, right, kidney right. disease and, you know. Uh, but Bishop, if you harbor those things, those will cause. Oh, my God. All kind of other things that you Oh, rub. my God. Oh, my God. The, those, those type of diseases for the soul will have a detrimental impact on the body. Yes, that's why a lot of us are sick. Yeah. Now, now. Uh, this 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 is important because you know even in in the natural we have two main screens that deal with soul and body. Uh, you have the psychiatrist mm -hmm. that deal with the mind, mm -hmm. and you have the physician that deal with, with the, the body. Health, the health. Yeah, the physical mm -hmm. man. But sometimes you can be physically fit, mm -hmm. but messed up. But mentally drained. Yes, I mean. You don't know. You will be walking around with people. And they can't looking, get no help from they, look at, they looking good on the outside. Yeah. On the inside, there's an eternal wall. You wonder why folk committing suicide, got suicidal thoughts. You wonder mm -hmm. why uh, uh, folks are, are looking good, but, you know, they talking to themselves. You they know, messed up. Uh, they're schizophrenic, you know, and they uh, this way today and that way tomorrow. You know they, why, uh, they never pleased with themselves and nobody else. It's because of what? They got a head trauma. Yeah, they harboring stuff from years on un forgiveness. And y'all know, I'm just talking to the women right now. We women, we can harbor some stuff. We can remember the minute, the, the date, the second, uh, everything. We harbor it. But God told me today to tell you all to let it go. Wow. So he can heal you. Heal you of, of, of that hurt from your soul. And you can get in right relationship with him. And give him all the praise and give him all the glory. And go where God wants you to go. Do what God wants you to do. Yeah. Be what God wants you to be. See, Who you, he wants you to be? All, all these, all these soulless, uh, soulless uh, diseases uh, can have an adverse effect on the body and cause disorders in the body. Yes, which would uh, ultimately cause destruction, uh, lead to destruction, and ultimately death yes. if it's not dealt with. That's why we can't harbor hatred. We can't harbor anger. Uh, we can't harbor malice uh, and unforgiveness. Mm. In this temple, let it go because it, you know, it, it it'll mess you up at some point in time. So you got to learn how to how to free yourself from these I call demons um, of the past you know and that. allow the Holy Ghost uh, to have His way in your life. Let those things go. Yeah, those things are behind. Mm -hmm. Let them go. Let them go and start pressing, moving forward. And you know what, Bishop? Because life is so short. Yeah. And our days are numbered. So the days that we have, we want to give them our what? Yeah. Bless the Lord at all times. Now, that's only two, <laughs> you see, that's only two reasons why David said uh, he would bless God. What's okay. The next one? The, the next one is uh, not only would he heal our diseases, but he redeems us from death. Ooh. He, he, he redeems us from death. We should have died. He forgives our sins, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, he heals our diseases, everyone. And he redeems you from hell. He saves your life. So, so, so we move from the penitent person uh, to the patient in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And now we see this pauper, this pauper who, is, who thinks his life mm -hmm. is worthless. Um, I, I'm reminded of a story uh, that was told to me the other day of a young man who had um, he had a watch, had some rings, something mm -hmm. of value. Yeah. Uh, but he, he fell on hard times. He fell on such hard times until uh, he was outdoors. He, he didn't have nowhere to stay. Uh -huh. And the only thing he had to hold on to was that valuable uh, ring, a uh, watch that he had. Wow. So he went down to the pawn shop. Oh, my God. He went to the pawn shop uh, not to sell his watch a ring, but, um, but to get some, some pennies. Mm. See some pennies. Yeah. Uh, he, he got just a few pennies, uh, not the full value, uh, so he can he can make it. And he got a ticket that says, you know, 
uh, when things change in my life, I'll come back and buy it back. Yes. But that never happened. That never happened. Things never changed. Things never got better. So he went back to the pawnbroker and said, you know, and, and gave his excuses of why things couldn't happen, what happened. You know, he was run down. He wasn't cleaned up. He was a, a, a big mess. Went through some tough times. Tough times that never can bounce back. So the pawnbroker said, man, get out of my shop. I'm keeping this ring. And he came back the next day. There it was in the window. It was on display mm. for 100 times more than what he had turned it in for. Wow. And that's, that's how we are sometimes in the moment. Life, if we don't get rid of this stuff in our, in our life, if we don't get rid of uh, the envy, the jealous, you know, and all this stuff that is causing us to harbor unforgiveness, it will run us into a ditch. It will run us into a place where we don't want to be. Yes, it and is. we thought we think we're worthless. But just when we think we couldn't make yes. it, just when we thought there was nowhere else better, yes, yes, yes. Jesus came and died for us on Calvary. How about that? I love it. He gave his life. And then the Lord said to us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm so glad I came to Christ because had I not uh, come to him, had I not been rescued by him, God knows where yes. I would be and you too, yes. where we would be today. He rescued us out of the snares of the devil. Yes, he rescued us out of the gates of hell and gave us another chance. So he is the Lord who redeems us. You yes. see that, Shirley? Yes. He redeems us from death. Because after sin, when it is finished, when it's through, it brings forth death. So we don't have to die. We can live. We live from and now on. That's what he does. He <laughs> redeems us out of some things, out of, you know, it's some things we've been in, um, been into that some, no, we don't want nobody to know about them. But but God God whatever that is God know it He'll bring you out of that He don't bring it back to um, judge you He redeem you He forget about it You know some of us our friends or some folks we've done some things they never let it go They bring it back They throw it back up in your face That's why I thank God for His only begotten Son Jesus who paid the price who came Say you know. Prepare me a body. Yeah, and he, he came. And he, he gave him a cross just for us. To what? To, to, to redeem, to, to, to set us free from all that we've done, what we harbor down in our soul and our spirit. Wow. That, 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 that hurt us beyond what we can even move forward. And some of us out there, you don't want to move forward, but God is saying for you, I, I re, I, I'm here today to redeem you, to set you free. Let it go. Let go and let God have his way. God is calling you today. Yeah, this, this song by David is a song of praise. A song of praise without having to ask God for anything in return. He just wanted to be grateful and thankful for all the many blessings and yes. benefits that he has bestowed upon him. And he says, my soul, you see, my soul is going to bless God from my head to my toe. I will bless the Lord. I will bless his holy name. My soul will bless my God. Yeah. And and then and then they call this the envelope song because the way it starts out in verse 1, if you read the entire song, in verse 22, David closed out by saying again, and you, oh my soul, bless God. Bless him. So we got to bless him. We got to give him glory. We got to praise him. Even in this season that we're in, we might be Thank you. on lockdown, but we're not locked up. We're shut in for a purpose. And that purpose is, is to reconnect with our God. Yes, and give Lord. us quality time to talk with him again mm -hmm. and, and again that. and again. Just to tell him thank you, not so much asking for anything, but just being so thankful for the opportunity oh, to be saved. Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes. Amen. We're praying now. We're going to pray for 
our community. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your loved ones. We are praying for those who may have fallen on hard times as a result of this pandemic that we're now facing. We're praying for those in the hospitals who are struggling, uh, trying to see their way clear, trying to find healing in their bodies. We're praying for the for the nurses and the doctors. Yes. You know this is uh, real serious when you see emergency room doctors and nurses huddled around in a circle praying. You know yes, Lord. we in troubled times. Yes, yes, yes. But I believe this is opportunity as well. Yes. It's an opportunity for us as people of God to recognize the power of God in this place and the power of God in you. And where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, oh God, he promised to be in the midst. Oh Father. So we we get up every morning at five o'clock and pray for you and pray for our neighbors and our family and, and for our country yes. and for our world. But this is your time. So wherever you are right now, your living room, wherever you are, mm. uh, wherever you are, whoever's in there with you, your sons, your daughters, your family, Father. just just grab them by the hand, even right where you are. And, and we're, going, we're going to close out uh, this session in prayer. And, and we want to thank you for spending this time with us as we walk in the Word. We want you to know that on tomorrow morning uh, at uh, 6 a.m., uh, there's going to be breakthrough prayer. Our breakthrough prayer line is open. We started it on, on Monday. So many called in on Monday, the line got, you know, got overwhelmed. Uh, but we got back on. So we got it fixed for this coming tomorrow morning. But we want to get ready uh, to pray. Yes, Lord. And prophets know you have a passion for prayer. I want you to lead us in prayer tonight. Yes. Just, just bow your head and let us pray. Father, on behalf of this nation, I ask that you would forgive us for our disobedience, our rebellions, and our sin of unrighteousness, ungodliness. Forgive us, God, for doing evil. God, we pray right now because we need you. We need you to bless our nation. God, we're in a pandemic right now, and we need you right now, God, like never before. We are hurting, God. Our nation are hurting, and our people are hurting. God, because we have sinned and went after other God. But now, God, we come back to you, and we ask right now in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name, God, that you will heal our nation and bless our land. Restore us, God. God, a lot of us are broken, God. We're asking you to heal us, God. A lot of us are hurting, God. We're asking you right now, God, to help us to get back up, God, where we fell down. We need you, God. We just praise you because praise is what we do when we are going through, God. America needs you right now. Save our land, God. We pray for our president. We pray for everyone under the sound of our voice, God. We ask you right now, God, to do what you do best, to be the God of our lives, God. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name. We thank you and we pray right now. And we say, God, have your way. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. This night, in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for your church families, your pastors, you know, Across this land, in this community, uh, they need your support as we are praying for you. Pray for them as well. We don't want one to be lost. We, we are praying for those who are in harm's way. And remember to read Psalms 91. Psalms 91, verse 10 and verse 11. We're going to hold that high throughout this whole season. Oh, Jesus. Listen, no ill shall come nigh thee, and no plague shall come near your tent. And here's the reason why. God has commanded his angels to, to protect, to guard, and to keep you throughout this duration. As long as you be faithful, as long as you stay the course and love oh, God man. and love people, I believe God's going to make a way you know. out of no way. Until next time, we want to say thank you again. Thank you. For being a part of Amen. Tuesday night Bible study, walking 
in, in the, the word. word. Amen. God bless you and God keep you.